Dear classmates, welcome back to the DFT chapter. In the previous video, we have introduced the MUX D scan architecture. In this video, we are going to introduce second free flop based scan architecture, the Clark scan architecture. The Clark scan was invented by NEC in 1968 and then they got public attention again in 1975. A clock scan free flop has two input. One is data input DI, the other one is scan input SI. This is the same as the MUX D scan free flop. The interesting thing about clock scan is that it has two independent clocks. One is scan clock SCK, the other one is data clock. DCK. The data clock DCK capture the data input from logic and the scan clock SCK capture the scan input from the previous free flop. The clock scan free flop has one data output Q which can be shared by the scan output SO. On the right hand side we showed the same clock scan free flop in IEEE symbol where DCK control the data input and the SCK control the scan input. This slide shows the timing waveform of a clock scan free flop. At the rising edge of the data clock, this free flop capture the data from the data input di at the rising edge of scan clock this flip flop capture the data from the scan input si please know that to avoid conflict the scan clock and the data clock do not overlap so there is only one clock rising at the same time this slide shows the clock scan architecture before and after scan insertion. The original circuit is like this. It has only one clock and the non-scan free flop. After the scan insertion, we have two extra I.O. pins. They are scan input and the scan output. All the free flops are replaced by the clock scan free flop. And we have one extra clock, which is the scan clock SCK. This slide shows the clock scan operation. In normal mode, we just post the data clock DCK. In test mode, we load the scan chain and shifting our test pattern using the scan clock ACK. After three clock pulse, we load our test pattern into the scan free flop. And then we pulse the DCK so that we can capture the response of the combinational logic into the scan free flop and then we unload the scan chain using SCK. In this way we can finish a test pattern using the clock scan operation. The ATPG model of clock scan is exactly the same as the MUX scan architecture. This slide shows the pros and cons of clock scan. In this figure, on the left hand side, we can see the schematic of a MUX D scan free flop. On the left, we have a multiplexer which selects from the data input and the scan input using 
the scan enable control signal. On the right, we have a master ledge followed by a slave ledge. So this is a simple deep free flop. On the right, we can see the schematic of a clock scan free flop. Similar to a mux D scan free flop, we have a master ledge here and a slave latch here but at the button we have one additional scan input controlled by the scan clock when we compare these two schematic we can see that the mux d scan is slower due to this additional mux delay so we can say that the clock scan is faster than the max scan. However, there is no free lunch. The clock scan is actually larger in terms of the routing area overhead. We cannot see from this picture, but if we want to distribute this additional scan clock, we will need a separate clock tree that result in a larger routing area overhead. Now we finish the clock scan architecture. Please try to answer this quiz. Which of the following statement is not true about the clock scan? Option A, clock scan is better than max D scan. Option B, clock scan has two clocks. Action C, clock scan is faster than max D scan. Option D, clock scan is useful for high speed circuit. Which of this statement is not true? Please make your choice. Okay, the answer is very simple. It's A, clock scan is faster but larger. So it has both advantage and disadvantage. We can choose to trade off between area and the speed of the circuit. So we cannot say that it is definitely better than max D scan. Now we have finished the clock scan architecture. There are actually many other scan architecture available such as random asset scan or scan tree architecture. Due to the time limitation, we are not going to cover this architecture in this video. We will only cover the shadow scan chain architecture. This picture shows the architecture of shadow scan chain. The shadow scan chain is actually a design for debug. It is actually more expensive than design for testability. As we can see from this figure, we have to duplicate the free flop in our design. As we can see in this figure, there are three free flop in the original design. However, we need to insert additional three free flops to support the shadow scan chain. So the area overhead of shadow scan chain is very large. The purpose of shadow scan chain is that we can allow no more operation during scan chain shifting. Because we duplicate the free flop, so we can shift out the contents of the scan chain without interfering the normal operation in the upper free flop. In a shadow scan chain, we actually have four clocks. The normal data clock is DCK, and we have a capture clock CCK, and shift clock TCK, and update clock UCK. So you can see that the routing overhead 
of shadow scan chain is quite large. Now let's explain how it works. Suppose that we want to observe the free flop contents in the circuit. First, we perform normal operation by DCK. And then in the middle of normal operation, we stop the circuit and uh, pause the capture clock CCK. So we can observe the contents in the free flop. We capture the response into our shadow scan chain. And then we can shift out the shadow scan chain using TCK. At the same time, we can still continue our normal operation using data clock DCK. So we can observe the content of free flop without interference with normal operation. On the other hand, if we want to control the free flop contents, we can do the following. First, we shift in the test pattern that we want to control by pulsing the TCK. And then we apply one update clock UCK so that we can transfer the content into our functional free flop. In this way, we control the content in the upper row of the free flop. And then we can begin our normal operation again by pulsing the data clock DCK. In this way, we can control the free flop contents in the middle of normal operation. In summary, in this video, we talk about clock scan, which requires two clock systems. The clock scan is faster than MUXD scan. However, it is larger because we need two clocks. It is useful for high speed circuit. We also introduced shadow scan chain architecture, which is a useful design for debug technique. We can control and observe the contents of free flop during normal operation. The penalty is that it requires huge area overhead. So it is only used in very expensive circuits. So that's all for this lecture. Thank you for watching.